Okay. So it, I'm really happy to get a chance to talk to you today, John. You, you're one of my uh, one of my all time favorites. Uh, I've seen you many times. Followed your career from Angora through the Scream, uh, Motley, of course, the Union, you name it, all the way through today. ESP. I mean, you've you've. You you deserve the name journeyman of rock and roll definitely. You've been. I don't know if that's a good. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, <laughs> it, it's just the way the cards were dealt. You know what I mean? Well, as as the Johnny Cash song says, you've been everywhere. I mean, literally, geographically, and, and all over the musical map. You've you've been in Brat. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you've been in so many bands. It's 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 amazing, but it's a great legacy. Um, and uh, Dead Daisies is one of my favorite bands. I'm certainly glad to see you come back. Um, this new album, I just had a chance to actually listen to Light Em Up. It's great stuff. Thank uh, you, man. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about this album. Um, you know, this was your first back in the band after Glenn Hughes was, uh, you know, in for a couple of albums. So Yeah. Um, it was, honestly, dude, it was easy. Like... It, it, it was like I never left. I mean, we did the same exact thing. We put ideas and riffs into a Dropbox before we got started. The only thing different that we did on this record that we did, you know, in the past, normally everybody would come here to Nashville. We'd like uh, work with Marty Fredrickson. Okay. Uh, we would just stay, you know, set up shop in Marty's studio for the duration. But this time we did some writing and recording for about maybe a week or so, 10 days. And then we all kind of had a bucket list thing, and that was to go down to the legendary fame studios in Muscle Shoals. Nice. So we went down there for about 10 days, and we did a bunch of stuff down there, and then we recorded, we came, packed up, and we came back up to Marty's, and, and we got back to work and finished up... It, and oddly enough, people will eventually realize this, but we not only did the light them up record, but while we were in Muscle Shoals at night, mm -hmm. we recorded a um, a full uh, a full blues album as well. Oh, nice, nice. Now, will this? I, I assume this will be released under the Dead Daisies name, also. Yes, it'll be next year, though. Nice. I mean, this record isn't even out yet, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, we just took a bunch of old blues standards and kind of did them our way. Or We tried to, without sounding, you know, cocky or whatever, <laughs> like we literally, each song we would do, we would go, what would Zeppelin do? Hmm. Um, you know, and if you listen to, like, two, for me, the two two songs that really stand out blue, old blue songs that Zeppelin did and made it their own is when the levee breaks sure. and then um in my time of dying off the physical graffiti record so we definitely took some liberties with it nice. with the songs but um yeah we did some Robert Johnson Muddy Waters Hal and Wolf like uh Rufus oh. Thomas BB King Freddie King we did a bunch of bunch of stuff and laid it down and it's uh it's I'm, I'm excited for everybody to hear that as well well wow, that sounds awesome and and you know when you when you say you took some liberties i actually like that i think fans like that too uh, you know you you know the, if you know the original song you don't want to hear that exact song again right you want to hear somebody actually put their stamp on it and do something different um and, and to me that it doesn't make it a, a necessarily a new song but it certainly certainly enhances your your listening experience when somebody does that so so i appreciate you guys are really kind of going out there and doing it your way too yeah well you know it is again like you said it's going to be under the dead daisy's moniker so yeah. um and 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 I, no disrespect to anybody that actually goes out and does the does the songs exactly the way that they were the first time you know what i mean but this is just you know it just it just it was it all came about through jamming we were just kind of <clears throat> we were just kind of chilling out at night like you know 5 36 o'clock marty or man, our manager would uh you know crack open a couple bottles of wine maybe a bottle of jameson and we would just sit sit sip on whiskey or wine and and it just jam 
And we just nice. said, you know what, let's let's fucking keep this thing going and and we'll do a blues record. Um, you know, so we did all that in Muscle Shoals and then we came up and and uh we finished uh finished the light 'em up record and then we mixed, mastered, and and got everything together for both albums. So one's in the can and ready to go for next year, and the other one's coming out on September 6th. Light them up. So it sounds like the chemistry um uh you know is there you guys jailed right away again well even when i was out i didn't leave on bad terms so that helps you know what i mean um and it, at one point when glenn was in the band <clears throat> i think it was um right after their holy ground record they had uh contacted me david david uh lowey contacted me and said hey glenn's not feeling good and uh, we had a rehearsal set up in New York. Mm -hmm. um, can you just come up and sing us through this stuff? Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, okay. So I went up and I rehearsed with them. Uh, I rehearsed with them for, I don't know, a week, 10 days. Wow. And then and then they packed up everything there. And then they went to LA and rehearsed the second week with Glenn before they went on tour. Nice. But I just kind of ran them through their paces. So we've always gotten along. Um, you know, the, the, the thing, the thing, I guess the beauty of the dead daisies is, you know, contrary to what we write musically or play musically live, we're friends, you know what I mean? We're all pals. We've known each other for, you know, 20 plus years. And, um, you know, I, I didn't leave on bad terms. So when they called and said, Hey, do you want to come back? I was like, yeah, okay. I'm good. I'm kind of I've kind of chilled out now for a few years. So, yeah, let's do it. So I never heard that story. What led to to you leaving the band there? It was really honestly scheduling prior to me joining the band. I had a band with my son, Ian, mm -hmm. and he moved from L.A. to Nashville to do just that, be in my solo band. Gotcha. And then. Man, I think it was maybe three months before I got uh, before I joined the Daisies, I got married. Mm. And, and a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was it was weird, but like our first record, Revolution, we put it out and it just started taking off. And then at that point, it was like tour the world, come home, do another record. Tour the world, come home, do another record. And you know, anybody else would have given their left leg for it. But I just said, you know what? Like my son's in one ear. He's gone, dad, you suck. I, you know, I moved there to be in your band. Now I don't even see you. Uh, and then my wife, like I'd have to call her and let her know I was actually coming home and remind her not to be standing in the doorway with a gun. You know what I mean? So I, I just, for me personally, I, I just wanted to kind of take some time and hang out with my kids, my wife, my grandkids, um, you know, still work, but work more at my own pace. Like, you know, go I out and do that's Thursday. Admirable. Yeah. I think yeah, that's just, admirable. People often don't, they put their career ahead of everything and they miss out on some important parts of their lives. So. Well, and I, I've done that, you know, I did it in the past and, you know, at the time, I'm 65 now. This was, I was just getting ready to turn 60. Yeah. And I just said, you know, uh, like, I, I don't need to do this. This, like, I, I don't need to kill myself. Uh -huh. And it wasn't just me. Like, I, like, you know, we would get, literally get done a tour and I'd look around the room and I'd look at David and, and Doug and Marco and, at the time, you know, and we were all burnt management was burnt the crew guys were definitely burnt <laughs> and i was just like man we need to slow this down a little bit you know what i mean not a lot a little bit and that was the thing when i came back david lowey said look i put this thing together you know like I i've always had these songs i've always wanted to play guitar i've played guitar i you know he writes songs and he needed an outlet. So he put the band together, but it was to have fun. Gotcha. 
And David said to me when I, my second go around, when we had dinner, he goes, I think we started to lose sight of the fun part. And he goes, I don't want to get into a, we're going to do this differently so that nobody suffers from burnout. Nice. Yeah. And I, I was like, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, but it was, it was, it was crazy. I mean, at, at one point, you know, we were in England and I remember we did, we did, uh, I, I, I think it was to make some noise record. It might've been the live and louder, but we literally did like two 90 minute shows on the same day. Wow. Like in two different places. Oh, man. And it was so, it was, it that's, was, that's I mean, it was awesome. It was great. But at the same time, there was a bit of burnout happening. Sure. And uh, I, I knew that I could go out and, and I could do my acoustic shows. Um, You know, so I got a new agent. I, and then I went out and, and I, you know, life was awesome in 2019. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> You know, it was I was busier than hell on in 2019, and then obviously 2020, January, February, March was awesome, and then I got the call to go home because everything was closing down from COVID. But, um, you know, that was it. So when David said, "Yeah, I want you to come back. We want the fun back, and but we're not going to burn ourselves out," I was like, "All right, cool. Count me in." Well, I have to say, hiring you as a singer is the best thing they've ever done, and uh, and I and I I love Doug Aldrich too. But literally, you are the reason I love this band. So I mean, I'm so happy they have you back in the fall. Nothing against Glenn. I love Glenn Hughes too. Great vocalist. Great. He's guy. a legend, dude. He's, yeah, you know, I mean, Glenn's a great guy. Um, but uh, but you just really fit in this band, and I I really enjoy you know your vocals mixed with their style of music a lot so that's cool man thank you yeah and and as far as i'm concerned and i'm not alone on this i'm sure you see the social media post i mean your motley album stands as one of the best of the career I, it's just a shame financially at the time it didn't come together you know as as a bigger selling album uh than it did but legacy wise that album stands right up there with, with some of their best well, I, I appreciate it. And, 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 uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I appreciate the guys giving me the opportunity, you know, um, I know some of the fans weren't really into it or didn't like it or whatever. And that's, that's fine. That's why they have chocolate and vanilla ice cream, <laughs> but you know, I will go down, I will go down in, uh, some sort of history as the fly in Motley Crue's Honey. So. <laughs> now, nah, great, great album. I mean, again, I understand that the changing musical times, changing a singer, a lot was happening. Um, so I get why it didn't sell as well. I was there on day one to pick that album up because I was a fan of yours from the screen. Um, but yeah, and, and I still play that record like to this day. Uh, and some of Mick's playing on that was just absolutely fabulous, too. Everybody, Tommy, yeah. Nick, even Nikki. I mean, Nikki played some great stuff on that record. Um, you know, so everybody really upped their game for that thing, and it was it was awesome. So you guys are getting ready to head out on another tour. Um, yeah, Monday. Monday. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So so right away you're back out back out on the road. Do you miss the road if you're off very long? Yeah, you know it's weird. I, I, I mean, I haven't been to the, I haven't been to the UK with the Daisy since, uh, God, two thousand eighteen. Mm. So it's been six years. Oh, wow. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. I'm, I'm looking forward to sitting at the uh, hotel bar at the end of the night with Doug and and the guys and just having a cold Guinness or you know whatever a little uh, Irish whiskey, but. Um, yeah, I, I still like it as long as, you know, as long as they continue to keep the pace the way they've been keeping it, yeah. um, which is fine. We go out, we'll, we'll go out for like three weeks to a month and then I go, okay, let's go home. We go home for a little bit, 
get reacquainted with our families again and then go back out. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, you know, it's awesome. It's been great. I love touring. <laughs> so tell me about your, your, your voice. Um, do you, I mean, do you have to do a lot of vocal warm ups and stuff these days? I mean, do you do anything different than you used to do prior to, uh, to hitting the stage? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, as you get older, you kind of figure out, okay, like I, I, I've kind of lost a step here and there, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't tell it, but, but. Well, no, I, I think you could, if you actually sat down and listened to maybe some of the scream record, mm -hmm. you know, and then even from the scream to the motley, there's definitely a tonality difference in my voice. Um, and, you know, so I, I don't feel like I can sing as high as I used to hmm. with the scream. Sure. But, you know, I, I guess I'm I'm still, yeah, I, I mean, I warm up. I never drink any any alcohol before a show. I wait till after. Um, and I just try not to talk too much yeah. uh, on show days. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, I'll keep it to a minimum. Show. Save it for the show. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I do warm-ups. Uh, I'll do some warm-downs. Uh, but I kind of go off into a little room. or Like, it's funny. All the guys are in the dress room. And I just get changed. And I do my thing. And then I leave. And I'll literally sit on the side of the stage. And do my vocal warm-ups right before I go up. And then I do them prior to getting to the venue. I do them uh, at my hotel room in the shower. Mm. You know what I mean? Steam so, probably helps too. <laughs> say what now? I said the steam probably helps a little too. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I try to do all that stuff. and But I'm not an excessive person. Never have been. Um, You know, so I think that kind of helps. Yeah. Well, and, and you have, I mean, it's a great voice, but it's a, it's a raw voice voice i mean you're you know when you when you're saying it just comes across as uh, natural i guess so yeah i i mean everybody's like so, hey so, so are you singing with your like chest voice or head voice and i'm like i don't fucking know dude like, <laughs> I, That's just I just hear true. i just hear shit and i just open my mouth and start going for it <laughs> couldn't tell you whether i'm doing what i'm doing is right or wrong but it works <laughs> Well, I know you, um, I'm going to touch on the subject here. I know you did a little bit of work with uh, with Mick Mars uh, there prior to his album coming out. Of course, that material was not on there. Um, I've heard in maybe other uh, interviews that you've talked about wanting to do a blues album with, with Mick. Um, has that ever been discussed or do you talk to Mick at all these days? Uh, yeah, we do, but... Um... You know, I'm just happy Mick got his record out. I'm sorry he's gone through all this stuff with the band, you know, but um, uh, it, that was that was a while ago. Yeah. And, you know, the two songs that I did do with Mick, it was it had something to do with him having to put some music out mm -hmm. to protect protect his trademark for his record label. Gotcha. And. So he just called me up and he goes, hey, Crab, could you sing these two songs for me? I'm not really crazy about them. And I said, yeah. So I went into the studio. We knocked that out. And then I was trying to talk to Mick when he said he wanted to maybe do some writing. I suggested, and I don't know if he liked the idea or not. We never really discussed it. I, I, I just gave him my opinion. But like Mick's always been into guys like Jeff Beck and Leslie West and 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 John Mayall and you know so I just said well why don't we do like a just like a heavy blues based but with riffs like Mountain yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> and he was like yeah you know oh, yeah oh, oh, you know that could be cool you know. But it makes a hard duck to read, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, 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 okay. He's yeah. a unique individual for sure. Yes. But, but, you know, he has the chops. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, his style, his guitar playing would fit that perfectly too. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to what he did on the, the four solo songs, his song Bittersweet, it's like, yeah, dude, like something like that, you know, do like a Jeff Beck at times, but just straight ahead, like, 
you know what I was hearing? Did you, did you ever hear the mountain song, Never In My Life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great song. Yeah. yeah, so like that. It's just a big riff. They're singing, but it's it's more about the riff. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and I said, dude, that would be your tone, the way you play, and riffs like that, it would be killer. Yeah. And he was like, all right, all right, all right whatever. So I just said, all right, there, there's the idea, you know, whatever, we'll see. But, um, uh, you know, who knows? I, I, I love Mick. And, and if he, he ever said, Hey, let's get together and just write something, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm good with it. But right now our schedules are just, he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. And, and, and uh, it's a little difficult to make it happen. So will you continue? I mean, obviously you're back in Dead Daisies, but will you continue your solo career on the side um, just to have that outlet? Yeah, once I figure out how all this streaming shit works, I, I put two <laughs> songs out and I'm like, I did a video, I hired a PR company, and it was like, I still don't even know. Like, it, it's funny, I talk to people and they go, hey man, you're one of my favorite singers. What have you, what have you been doing since Motley? Yeah, I and I go. The songs uh, are great. They're they're well. I did, yeah. you know. But it's like you do this stuff, and I'm like, how do you actually get people to to know that the songs are out? And exactly, you know what I mean. So I I got to figure this out. I've been talking with my manager, and uh, you know, I have a separate manager from the Daisies, um, you know. But I, I I'm trying to figure it out. But I'm in no rush, man. It's like Dead Daisies first. I got an outlet here to release music, and uh, you know, I can just do my thing, and and then once the once the bug hits me, I'll finish up a solo record. Well, when you put those singles out. Excess Rock, of course, we we definitely promoted those. We put those out that you, you know, had new material out. Um, and we do that with the Dead Daisies, of course. And we we hit that core demographic, aud you know, audience. I mean, guys who grew up like me listening to, you know, th this form of rock music that unfortunately seems to be dying out in some cases. Glad to see people like you continue to make new music. I think that's one of the biggest issues is that a lot of people live in the past um, and they don't realize even that some of the artists are making new music and still moving forward with this. And it's great. I mean, I, yeah. I want to just listen to the same four albums, even though some of those albums are some of my favorites. I, I like it when you guys make new music, you know, so um, kind of keeps that ball rolling. And, you know, another generation gets a chance to hear it. You know, I've, I've got a, a son who's in his 20s now and uh, he you know, started out as a young kid listening to rap like all the other kids. And now he's into, you know, classic rock, heavy metal, hard rock. He listens to a lot of the same stuff I do. Um, so just keeping that ball rolling, I think taking these kids to concerts, letting them see, you know, artists like you guys live uh, really, you know, shows that generation that, hey, this is this is great music. It's fun. Um, yeah. Check it out. So. So hopefully you get that PR part worked out. If you hit the right demographics, these people are all out there. Um, you know, that that's who we were kind of preaching to the choir with them all the time. But we we put this stuff out, um, you know, constantly to uh, to reach that audience because that's that's our bread and butter, too. <laughs> yeah. So your solo career kind of be on hold, I guess, for a little bit with this, obviously, with this big tour uh, that you've got. And then, you know, you're going to have this blues album coming up. So it sounds like you got a pretty full plate, even though. Yeah, we're probably, you know, our manager's already putting stuff together touring wise for us for next year. Or so, um, you know, we'll just keep this train rolling as long as everybody wants to come and see it, you know, so. Well Count me in. I'll definitely be there. And and I, I thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you've got a lot, as we just discussed, going on, but I appreciate you taking time out to talk to. Yeah, this talk. is this this is number two. I started one at eight, eight thirty, <laughs> and I'm going until four thirty this afternoon. Oh, man. <laughs> Every 20 minutes. Uh, good so, luck to you. Then that, that's a, that's a lot of talking. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, John. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And, and I, I know our readers are looking forward to uh, to seeing this interview and uh, uh, maybe checking out your new singles now as well as the new Dead Daisies album, which is absolutely fabulous. Awesome, buddy. Thank you. You bet. Keep Thank waving you. the flag. You got it. You too. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.